How's it going, everybody? Nerds Rising here, and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In today's video, we're going to be checking out another very strong team for the Open Great League, and this time it's going to be just a little bit different. Now, if you're looking at the team right now and thinking, wow, like this team is not that creative, it's kind of similar to your last team. Well, you are correct, and that team that I featured in the last video, the Defense Deoxys Double Diggersby, I swear by it, I have for season. It's super strong, guys, but for whatever reason, after my last video, the game was just like, you know what? You're not going to win anymore with this team, and it just kept giving me Medicham knocked out Charizard, which I think Jonkus maybe featured that team, and then Defense Deoxys Altaria knocked out, like literally every single game for like four sets in a row. I kid you not, guys, I faced that team 15 times throughout the course of my battles, and I had like three or four one fours in a row. And again, the team is super good, but it does struggle quite a bit against double flyers. And I just could not see anything other than double flyers. So I dropped like from 2860 something all the way back down to like 2660. So 200 ELO down in one day, just like that, after going up 500 over the course of three to four. And you know what? That's just how the game goes. Even the best players have bad days. And sometimes, for whatever reason, the algorithm just has your number and you just keep getting hard countered, and that's just what happens. So, I switched the team up a little bit. It functions the same way as the last team, but the nice thing about this team is that Dunsparce and Umbreon both have neutral play against Flyers, whereas Double and Diggersby do struggle quite a bit. So, the Dunsparce specifically, the Mon that we're going to be featuring, has very, very nice coverage on the meta. And if you go on PV Poke and you just look, at its matchups against the meta. This thing beats Knockdown, it beats Trevenant, it beats Lantern, and it also puts up a very close fight against Gfisk, and I believe it does beat Bastiodon as well, which is pretty crazy. So just the fact that it beats those alone is enough for me to build one, and I I did spend quite a bit of resources. I think I spent almost 350k dust on this thing, but if you have one sitting in your arsenal, I would recommend giving it a try, guys, because just the fact that it beats Knockdown and Lantern alone it was enough for me to build it. So, the Umbreon as well. Uh, a couple people did mention in the comments what's a good Mon to use if you don't have a double. And somebody did mention Umbreon as a potential option. And I think Umbreon actually does have pretty similar coverage to double. So, if you don't have one, try out Umbreon. We all have known it and seen it for seasons and seasons. It's very good. But yeah, let's just get into the battles here. And I am going to be showing them in chapters again, like the last one. So you guys can kind of scroll through and see the different leads that we encounter. Um, is the team better than the double team? Mm, I'm not sure on that. I've only used it for one day. I did go up like 75 ELO with it, but I don't know. It's going to be tough for me to tell you guys that it's better than the double team. But anyway, let's get into the battles here. And again, we are going to be starting off with some pretty bad leads. So, Sorry guys. And again, I'm struggling with a cold, so sorry for the sniffling as always. And as you saw, we had a Trevenant lead there, so we're going to be safe switching into the Dunsparce. And depending on the lead, I do sometimes safe switch into the Umbreon, but since the Dunsparce is our soft counter to the Trevenant, we do bring that in. And the opponent actually, despite me over farming a ton, still catches my Rock Slide onto a Lantern. But the nice thing is, again, Dunsparce has a pretty nice Lantern matchup, so we're actually going to be able to take this in the even shielding scenarios and they do go for a surf i knew that was just going to be a surf probably i call the uh the surf bait there and now the opponent's going to have to start giving me shields if they want to try to maintain switch and since we had such a huge energy lead we're actually getting to a second drill run before they throw and they just let it go and we now have switch advantage and they actually bring back in the trevenant so they clearly don't have a great answer to our dunsparce here and the fact that we have switch means that our DD does not have to face this Trevenant, and Umbreon is just such a hard wall to Trevenant. Um, despite Diggersby having a very nice Trevenant matchup, Umbreon just absolutely slaughters it, and they have a Pelipper in the back, which isn't always the best situation for DD, but up a shield, we're in a very comfortable spot here because they do land the Hurricane here, but all I have to do here is just build up to the Thunderbolt. I am going to bait... This is a super safe bait. They basically have to shield this, and they do shield it. And despite us double debuffing our attack, a Thunderbolt is still easily going to KO this Pelipper. And I believe they are at the back-to-back -back Weather Balls here, but 
we can just double shield here, Thunderbolt the Pelipper, and as you saw, I did bank the foul play on the Umbreon, so after we take out this Pelipper, our switch clock should be up, and we're just going to hard swap in, foul play the Trevenant, and that's going to be a very tough team comp for us there that we managed to take switch back from in game one. So again, even if the, they bring in the Pelipper to the Dunsparce, I think up energy, the Dunsparce should take back switch from the Pelipper as well. So as you see, Dunsparce just a very strong core breaker right now in this meta. And again, another Trevenant lead here. Again, we're going to bring in the Dunsparce. And again, the opponent is not switching out right away. And they throw on alignment and we get a full rollout through, which is amazing. And they again, the opponent brings in a Lantern. So we've already core broken two of their Mons. So the fact that they're bringing a Lantern in here makes me think that they probably do have a knockdown on the back. So we're just going to stay in, just throw on correct timing. I'm, as you see, I'm throwing on odd numbers here. I'm throwing after either one rollout or three to prevent them from sneaking in a full Shadow Claw. And they actually just elect to let that go. And now I know that I can take back Switch here. I know that I'm probably not going to be able to farm down here because rollout is just an absolutely terrible fast move for damage. It actually has less damage per turn than Mudshot and like the Psycho Cut move. So the opponent there, I think, just recognized that we were going to take back Switch there, and when we did, they probably had like a Bastion on the back that was going to get aligned to their, uh, the RDD was going to align to, and they just surrendered there knowing it was probably over. So if I was them, I probably would have tried to play it out, but again, another Trevenant lead that we take back uh, a win from, and then again, a third Trevenant lead here in a row, and this time the opponent brings in a Shadow Swampert, which is definitely not what you want to see on the Dunsparce safe switch. So as you see, they are resisting the rollouts, and... For some reason there, I go over 100 energy, not really sure what I was doing there. Definitely a mistake, but again, it doesn't really matter because there's just no way we're going to take switch here. So at the very least, I do shield once because I want to get at least one shield back from them. And we're just going to have to see what we can do here. This is not looking super good. We don't have switch. Our DD is still going to be aligned to the Tremonent. And the opponent here, I think, makes a mistake. They actually give up switch here. They do bank a ton of energy on the Swampert, but they give up switch here. And because of that, I'm going to be able to align my Umbreon to this Trevenant. And again, Umbreon just has such a dominant matchup against Trevenant. There's just really not going to be a lot that they're going to be able to do here. They do throw Seed Bomb after Seed Bomb. But as you see, the Umbreon just eats Seed Bombs for breakfast. We take the Seed Bombs. I do over farm as much as I can there. I am at the back to back. And there's just no way they're going to shield this. But the unfortunate thing is they do have an, an Umbria or a Swampert with a ton of energy and their back mod is actually a Bastion. So very interesting that the opponent would give up switch there knowing we have a defense Deoxys and knowing they have a Bastion on the back. So what I'm going to do here is just take advantage of our heavily misaligned switch clocks. And I think that if we shield once against this Swampert, we should actually be able to counter them all the way down before they get to another one. That's what I was counting on here. And as you see, we just do. I think they were just getting the energy for their Hydro there. If they get to another Hydro, we just simply lose. But I was banking on the fact that they would get outpaced there. And now we're going to be able to do enough damage to this Bastion to get it into a range where a Foul Play is going to KO. And as you see, I did bank the Foul Play on the Umbreon here. And again, we're going to be taking another win from a very, very difficult lead. And again, I'm not sure if the opponent just stays in there and doesn't give up switch they might they may win that game but a little bit of a misplay by them and we're able to come back from a lost lead so i believe i do have one more ghost lead for you guys i think it's a, a save line yeah save line the next battle which is actually way worse than the trevenant and here again we bring in our soft answer with which is the dunsparce and the opponent meets our dunsparce with an azu which I believe this is a losing matchup for the dunsparce just because our moves are all non-stab and Dunsparce just doesn't hit particularly hard when you're just doing neutral damage. As you see, these drill runs really don't do a lot, but the fact that we've already landed at least two, I think, was that two or three drill runs? We've already landed so much damage on them that we actually might be able to put in some work here if we commit shield. So I commit a shield and they actually let the next one go. And here we actually win CMP. I did not think that Dunsparce would win CMP against Azu, but we do, and we get a shield. And now that I know I win CMP, I should actually be able to let this go. I think even if it was a Hydro, we probably would just barely have lived it. And now I'm going to farm up to their next move and again throw on CMP. And this is going to force their second shield. 
and the opponent does not want to give up their second shield. So we have switched now, which is massive. And again, they bring back in the Sableye. So this is telling me they probably have a knockdown on the back if they're not bringing their third Mon in to our Dunspar. So we land a draw one, and I'm not sure, do they farm down? They do just barely farm down, which is not, not great for us. But again, Umbreon is a great answer to Sableye. And I think they blind throw the foul play there, which is a huge mistake. And sure enough, there's the knockdown on the back. And even though we're down on health and energy here, I guess not on health, but we're down on energy here, the Deoxys is going to do enough damage to this knockdown to allow our Umbreon to sweep the endgame here. And this is another reason why I like the Umbreon instead of the Diggersby or the Double, because Umbreon is just so tanky. It has a lot of neutral play against Flyers that the Double and the Diggersby don't necessarily have. Now, obviously, you guys saw in the last video, Double does very well against Noctowl, but it doesn't really do well against other Flyers. So, as you see there, we got the shield with the Thunderbolt. We let the DD go down, and now it's just going to be the Umbreon show for the rest of this battle. I do over farm. I want to come out of here with some energy for when the Sableye switch clock comes back in because the Sableye does have quite a bit of energy. So I'm just going to commit to a farm down here. I have to save this shield for a potential return. So I'm not going to be shielding these sky attacks and the Sableye does come back in and we do actually CMP them here. I don't think this foul play will quite KO, but it should put them into range where they're going to get snarled down and then we can just foul play the knockdown. So this is going to be a GG. These games are kind of slow. Just because we have such thick mons, they do go kind of slow. As you see, the timer is actually coming up, so this is a very long, drawn-out game. But again, Dunsparce on the safe switch there takes back switch, and that ends up winning us the game. So, very well played here. And now, I believe we're going to be going into some G-Fisk leads, because G-Fisk is another very, very common lead that I saw. And despite the, the typing here and the fact that we have counter, the G-Fisk lead is actually not that comfortable for Deoxys, because... All of our charge moves are resisted. So what I like to do in this matchup is I build up to their Earthquake and then I, I safe switch into the Umbreon just because there are very few things in the game that tank neutral damage as well as Umbreon. As you see, that EQ doesn't even get us into the yellow health. And they actually answer our Umbreon with a Swampert, which is very nice. If this is their best answer to a Umbreon safe switch, this tells me they probably have something like a Trevenant or a Sableye in the back that's not gonna wanna see our Dunspar. So unfortunately, since we were down health, we're not really gonna be able to take back Switch, but the nice thing is here, we can bring back in our Deoxys, and again, we just barely get the farm down right as they were reaching their move. We get the farm down, the Stunfisk does come back in. I actually do throw the Psycho Boost there because Dunsparce, again, it doesn't hit super hard. Despite having some nice moves, it doesn't hit super hard, and if I would've just immediately brought in the Dunsparce, they actually are not, they would not have been in drill run range. So I psycho boost them to get them into drill run range. And now the opponent is staying in. I correctly shield the earthquake there. And unfortunately I do get baited here, but the fact that they're staying in does tell me they probably have something in the back that's weak. And sure enough, it's a Trevenant. And as you see there, I over farmed on the G-Fist because I was expecting them to try to catch the drill run. And by over farming, I prevent the catch. And now Trevenant is gonna have to eat a lot of rock slides and despite being down a shield, Dunsparce just has a very, very good Trevenant matchup because I think we can actually tank three Seed Bombs from full health, so we're just going to be rock sliding this thing for days. And as you're going to see, the opponent actually just lets that go. They're saving a shield for their, their G-Fisk, but the thing is, we're not in EQ range, so we can just farm all the way up to 100 energy and then just launch off basically three Psycho Boosts in a row. And I think at this point, the opponent just recognizes that it's, it's over and they just let it go. Yeah, and then they surrender. So, <clears throat> sorry again. <clears throat> I have to sniffling again, guys. But GG in that game. And again, another G Fisk here in the next battle. And this time they actually safe switch into a Sableye. So, when you see a G Fisk lead and you see a ghost type like a Sableye come into our Deoxys, which is a very, very hard answer to Deoxys, you have to immediately assume that their Bakmon must be a very good check to Deoxys because. If they're running a common line like, say, Stunfisk, Medicham, Sableye, they're not really going to want to safe switch into their hard answer, because then once our, our Umbreon takes out the Sableye, they're, they're going to have a G-Fisk and an, a Medicham left to have to deal with the Deoxys. So my guess is there's going to be a Trevenant in the back. If they're bringing in such a hard response to the Deoxys, 
they have to have something just as strong against it in the back. So I'm reading Trevenant in the back. So I actually do shield the second return there. So we do go down a shield, but now our Umbreon has so much energy. We're going to get this G Fisk pretty low to the point where our Deoxys or our Dunsparce are going to be able to handle this because this now is just about in drill run range. And I'm fully expecting there to be a Trevenant. So I bring back in the Deoxys, and sure enough, there's the Trevenant, as expected. We Psycho Boost it, and this probably will get a shield, and actually it does not. But either way, this is totally fine, because even down a shield, especially with them already at half health, we can just get to three Rock Slides here and KO this Trevenant. And as you see, Seed Bomb just does absolutely nothing to Dunsparce. We can very comfortably take a second, and it actually looks like we can take a third as well. So, again... As you're seeing, I'm throwing my moves after one rollout to prevent them from sneaking through a full Shadow Claw. If you're running a three turn fast move, you do want to throw on odd numbers. And the thing I have to be careful of now is them potentially trying to catch one of my rock slides. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm getting the energy for my move now, but I don't throw the rock slide. I know they're gonna try to catch, and if they catch a rock slide, that's gonna allow them to over farm massively. And by not catching there, they're forced to rock slide me straight away, and this does not allow them to get to two moves. One Earthquake does not KO here, and now we're going to be able to farm down with the DD. We have two Psycho Boosts loaded, and the Trevenant, since they just throw, they just threw a move, does not have two Seed Bombs, and Psycho Boost actually KOs the Trevenant there. So that time, recognizing that our Switch Clocks were coming back up and not throwing the rock slide on the G-Fisk won me that battle there. And I think that was the last of the G-Fisk leads, and now... I do have the Medicham lead. Medicham is a pretty nice lead, um, but I am going to show it anyway here just because it's so common that you're very likely going to see a Medicham at some point with this team. Uh, it's nice to catch it here, and unlike the last team with the double and the Diggersby, if they're running double flyer, this team actually does pretty well against double flyer. So we're just going to stay in and play out a very narrow win here. We do win this battle with like literally probably 5 HP left. Just because Metacham does outpace us, but our Thunderbolts do a bit more than their Ice Punches. So as you see, we're very low, but we do get to the Thunderbolt and this will KO unless they commit a shield and they do just let it go. So I'm fully expecting this to be a, a double flyer line just because I saw it so many times, guys, with the double team. And the nice thing is, since we very nicely managed our energy there, we do get to a Psycho Boost. And you're probably wondering here, why do I bring in the Umbreon? And the reason being, sometimes you do see, if it's not double flyer, oftentimes you will see a Bastiodon in the back when you have a Metacham lead. So I was thinking just in case they have a Bastiodon, I will actually save my Dunsparce for their backmon because Dunsparce does a lot better against Bastiodon than the Umbreon does. So that's why I bring in the Umbreon here, just in case they're running Basti. And as you're going to see, they don't shield. They're saving two shields for their backmon. And it's actually a shadow Charizard, which is very, very scary. Fortunately, I think we are going to get a shield here, and we do. And now Dunsparce is going to come in here. And despite this being very scary, we're actually going to call the bait. And since we had two shields, they do bait. And now, yeah, that game was just over because we could have just double shielded their blast burns and then gotten to two rock slides. So the bait there... I think made that game a bit more comfortable for us, but yeah. Lantern lead here in the next battle. I did include a lantern lead because again, lanterns are just everywhere. You're gonna see a lantern, guys. And since we're running two very neutral anthers in the back, I do psycho boost and dip there on the lead because if they're running a meta cham in the back, which they are, we had to switch into something to lure it out. So the nice thing again about the Umbreon is it's just so dang bulky that even though we're down health, we actually are going to force them to throw energy here because we will get to three foul plays. And on against an XL Medi, three foul plays doesn't quite KO, but it does get them, excuse me guys, extremely, extremely low. And yeah, we're just going to be able to, to force their energy here. And now DD can very comfortably come back into this matchup and take this thing out. And then hopefully the goal is going to be here to have Dunspar sweep in the back because we've already seen the Lantern. And as you guys know, if there's a Lantern, there's probably going to be a Noctowl. So I'm fully expecting at this point that it's going to be a Noctowl in the back. And like I said in the intro, Dunsparce beats Lantern and Noctowl. So we come in 
Uh, they come back in with the lantern. Again, I'm going to Psycho Boost and dip, and then it's done sparse time. And we'll have to see. They actually do shield, which is amazing for us. And they're staying in, guys. So right away, I'm like, if they're not switching out right away, there's got to be a knockdown. So the thing I, gotta, I have to make sure of is not to let them catch. As you see, they perfectly swap on our charge move, but I over farm. And now Knockdown is going to have to eat quite a few rock slides to the face. And they're in a very tricky spot. They're down a shield and they actually let that go. And this is perfect because now I can just shield the sky attack, fully roll out them down. And we're going to take this game here because basically we're already nearly at two drill runs and we're not even in surf range. So I'm just going to call a bait here, knowing that even if they do Thunderbolt me, I still have enough health on my Deoxys where I should be able to get to a move. So I call it and it's the surf. And now the lantern's gonna get drill run and that's gonna be a GG. So again, as you're seeing guys, Dunsparce, huge core breaker. It beats the lanterns, it beats the knockdowns, it beats the Sableyes and the Trevenants. And what more do you really need from the little bug larva maggot thing? I don't know what the heck it is guys. It's really nasty looking in. Yeah, I think we have two more battles left. So. The last two battles are going to be against poison types, which, to be honest, I actually have seen some poison types coming back. Um, Victory Bell is just extremely scary in neutral matchups. Despite us being a psychic type, this is anything but a comfortable matchup for our DD here, because look at how much damage the Razor Leafs have done already, and the opponent actually recognized there I was probably going to try to Psycho Boost again, so they actually switch into an Azu, and this is a little awkward because we can't bring in the Umbreon here. So what I decide to do is bank the Thunderbolt. Rather than throwing the double debuff Thunderbolt on the Azu, I bank the move. And now I'm going to bring in the Dunsparce. And you guys have already seen Dunsparce. It doesn't do great against Azu, but it does win CMP. And it will put in some work just because we outpace the Azu here. So I don't necessarily need to win this matchup. But what I want to do is I want to stall this Switch Clock out. And as you see, it's almost up. I want to bank this energy, and I actually bank two moves, and now I make the snipe with the Deoxys. Do they want to give up their last shield? And they don't want to give it up. So I have to keep in mind, my Dunsparce is on like 2 HP, but I have two moves banked, which is massive, and their last Mon is a Skarmory. So what I need to be careful of is, if I bring in the Dunsparce now, I'm only going to get off one of my moves because their fast move will KO. So what I need to try to do is wait for a time where I can bring the Dunsparce in that Ace fast move will not sneak through and try to get off both of my moves because I don't want that energy to go to waste. So I am expecting them to not bait here since we're so bulky. They do full send it and their switch clock is not quite up yet. So they're going to have to probably shield this foul play since their debuff and they are and they make a very nice catch. but. The important thing is here, they're shieldless, and since they've just switched in a Mon, no fast move is sneaking through, so I can now bring in the Dunsparce, and I can get my move off, and now I can get my second move off. Since, again, they're switching in a new Mon, a fast move is not coming through, I'm able to get both of my charge moves off, the drill run to take out the, uh, the victory bell, and then the rock slide there to get this into a range where a foul play is going to KO, and Umbreon again, just so incredibly thick. We tank the Brave Bird like it's nothing, and we foul play the Skarmory. And then I actually forgot that the Azu, I actually had stopped tapping there, and then I realized the Azu was still alive in the back, and I farm it down. So that actually ended up being pretty close, but GG to the opponent. And in the last battle, guys, we have a Shadow Nido, the forgotten poison type that was really super annoying for the last few seasons, but the, I actually have seen a few of these things coming back lately, but this is actually really not a comfortable matchup for DD, especially with shields up, because we actually have to bait with a double resistant Thunderbolt. And fortunately, the opponent actually did shield there. If they if they call that bait, then I think we probably just lose the game. But fortunately, they do double shield, and we're able to get both their shields. But this is still not comfortable for us because. That Nido just does so much damage, and they actually bring in a Bastiat onto our Umbreon, which is not a great situation, especially considering that we are down health and we're debuffed. So my goal here is just going to be to get these foul plays off as soon as possible, and then try to bank energy if I can, because if you can switch out of matchups with energy banked, it really is just a good thing to do in general. So my goal here is going to be throw this foul play, bank one, and then take advantage of our misaligned switch clocks, and bring back in my DD because I know I'm just outside of Stone Edge range here. 
so I should be able to get some very valuable counter damage off onto this Bastion. They actually go for a Flamethrower. I think they were expecting it to just barely not KO and then farm down, but they undershot there, and this forces them to throw again, and now they're energy dry, and we can come in with our Dunsparce and get ahead on energy here, because I know that Nito has some energy, and I want to have some energy ready to throw at it if it comes back in, so I, I throw just before they get to a Stone Edge. We're going to take this out, and now we're going to have to see what's in the back, and it's actually their own defense Deoxys, so respect to the opponent there for running the DD, but this is actually not good for us whatsoever, because as you're seeing, these Dunsparce moves just don't do too much, so I use the energy I have stored, I combo play here, this does a ton of damage, and now we just have to hope that our Dunsparce is going to be able to clutch this endgame out, because they do have a lot of energy on the Nido. I do click my move right away, I have to no shield this, because the DD does have a Thunderbolt loaded, and now the question is going to be, can Dunsparce survive long enough to get to a move? And on one HP, the little maggot gets to a drill run, does this KO, and it does KO. We take a very, very close final battle of the video. So yes, you guys have seen it here. Dunsparce is a Deoxys counter. And the question again, is Dunsparce and Umbreon a better backline than the Double and Diggersby? I think in some ways yes, because both of these mons have better play against flyers in general, but again, I'm just going to have a hard time telling you it's better overall, just because Double is still the GOAT, guys. But uh, that being said, if you're looking for a spicy mon that core breaks the basic bitch meta of Trevenant, Lantern, Noctowl, and Sableye, try out Dunsparce, because... I think it kind of is pretty good, guys. It's not rated super high on PB Poke, but give it a shot sometime. And that being said, thank you so much for watching. My last video has the most likes and views of any of my content so far. So thank you so much to everyone who's watched it, who's liked it. It really does mean a lot. And yeah, if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, consider hitting that subscribe button because the more subscribers we can get, the more Pokemon my wife will let me play.